Hey, what's up you guys? It's Anil from Woody Woody Work. In today's video, we're building a brand new window seat and I'm gonna share with you some tips that almost cost us this whole project. A few weeks back, I put out a video on five do's and don'ts of building a window seat. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link for it in the description. But this window seat was completely trashed. Completely beginner, really didn't appreciate it. It looked horrible in our dining room, so we're redoing it. Of course, with every project, you know, you start by ripping your materials. We went down to our local lumber yard, Peach State, to pick up the material. Everything is rough cut, and then we take it to the table saw to rip it to its final dimensions. That way we can get everything as square as possible. Once we measure how long we need, we then take our track saw and we cut the lengths of the window seat. It's easier to do this on the floor than trying to do this on a table saw. And then from there, we take it to the table saw and then we rough cut the length. So this is gonna be the top and the bottom of the window seat, followed by the side pieces that we're gonna create for it. All I'm doing here is just cutting the plywood in half so it's in manageable sections. This is gonna be the, the side walls, the side partitions for the drawer boxes. So I'm just cutting them four foot and then we take those back to the table saw. Here, Sam is just planting some two by fours. These are gonna be used for the base. So I'm not actually gonna make the whole carcass with the kick plate included. I'm actually gonna create a kick plate, you'll see later on in this video, out of these two by fours. So we're planting everything down to their a size that they all equal out to before we install those. And all we're doing is just cutting more plywood, getting it down to manageable sections to start the install process. Everything starts off from a rough number and then we cut it down to its final size. Never cut something down from a four by eight sheet down to your final size, just because you might wiggle around the plywood and then once that happens, you're stuck with whatever it is that you just cut. We're using pocket holes for this application. It works well because these pocket holes are gonna be hidden, you'll never see them. If this was gonna be a project where you would see the sides or any screws, we would then use dominoes, but for this project, pocket holes work well. If you don't have one of these pocket hole jigs, make sure to pick one up. This is a 720, it's not the pro version, I do have that, but this 720 works extremely quick. It is extremely useful versus like some of the ones that you have to hand clamp. It makes the process extremely fast. Now, if you've never seen this before, this is something I like to do. I brad nail my two pieces I'm screwing together. I pre-drill a hole and then I screw the two pieces together. This acts like a second set of hands if no one is there to help you. It works very well. I've always used it on all of the projects that we put together. Never really have any issues unless you have to take it apart, then you run into issues, but that's not that difficult. I thought this was funny. You see that quick close up? I'm gonna capture everybody's like facial expressions when they're just like resting, not thinking. That was mine. Um, <laughs> but I'm catching everybody. Yeah, no one's safe. And then here, what we're doing is now we're putting the partitions that's gonna create the drawer boxes. So that piece that Sam just placed right there is essentially a spacer that we use to just space out each section. That way we can build the, oh, caught Sam. <laughs> She got caught, right? And then once we have that piece in place, like I said, brad nail it in a couple spots, pre-drill your hole and then screw it in place. We're using one and a quarter inch screws because this is three quarter inch material. Don't go bigger than that, don't go smaller than that. One and a quarter for three quarter inch wood is kind of the go-to size. Also, if you don't have a countersink bit, definitely look into the one that's produced by Milwaukee. It has the pre-drill tip followed by the countersink bit attached to it. So it's like a two-in-one action. Instead of having to switch between two bits, you can get all of it done, the tapered as well as the pre-drilling hole. And we use this on all of our projects. Once the carcass is assembled, then we have to put a back plate on top of that. So instead of doing a dado, we just attach a plate to the back of it using brad nails and glue. This is gonna be pressed up against the wall so we never really have to worry about it falling off or someone pushing it out from behind, nor will anyone ever see it because there's drawers in place. So doing it this way is the best method for us in the quickest way, but keep in mind of the size because if you do this method, you wanna make sure that you factor in how thick your back piece is compared to the size of your box and the spaces going into. 
Our space was 23 and a quarter inches. So we had to make sure with the back of the box and the face frame, we didn't exceed that measurement. Now in the five do's and don'ts video, I mentioned formats of joinery when it comes to your face frames. Here we're using pocket holes because you'll never see the backside of the face frame. And that other built-in, I just brad nailed the, the face frame together and it started to come apart. So I used glue with these Craig screws and a Craig bit to just screw everything in place. It sits flat. Doing it this way where you have some type of flat surface beneath ensures that your face frame is flat on the side that people are gonna see. But even if it's not flat, you still have to sand it to get the glue marks off. So it's perfectly fine. This combination square is an important tool to have, especially when laying out face frames. You can change the depth and the size that you need and to make sure everything is equaled out. We were just sizing up the sides because we left a 2 16th inch overhang on either side so that it was as close to the walls as possible. Once we finished with that, we put the vertical styles in place and then screw those in using pocket holes and screws as well as wood glue. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. That way we could push out to a larger audience and I can continue to make videos like these for you guys. Making sure everything looks good. Screw those in place and you're good. This pocket hole jig that we're using here is a lighter version of that 720 you saw me using earlier. It attaches to the Craig clamp. They're both sold separately, but they're great to have, especially when you're doing face frames or you need to attach your face frame. So because none of the outside areas are gonna be exposed, we put pocket holes on the outside to attach the face frames. If you don't have access to be able to do this, then you'd wanna put the pocket holes on the inside. And then from there, Sam is working on the face frames using our bench top router table. If you wanna see a video on how to make face frames, drop it down below. And that way I can put out some content for you guys on that there. Oh, and in the part we love so much, spraying. So we're using a Graco True Coat 360 handheld sprayer for the primer. It'll be linked down below. Quick tip, use gray primer for darker colors, white primer for lighter colors. Make sure you guys are priming before you put your top coat on. It's an important step that you do not want to miss. And the paint color is Puder Green. All right, what's up, you guys? So we made it back to the house. We have everything we need here to install the window seat, but before we start that, I have to start this. It's waffle time. It's like five o'clock in the afternoon. Why am I eating waffles? Don't know, but who cares? All right, I'll get with you guys in a second. Now for best practice, guys, always pull your baseboards before installing a built-in. If not, you're gonna be fighting against the measurements of your baseboards. We use a razor blade, mallet, and a pry bar. That's it. Razor blade scribes that top edge so you don't peel away at the paint and then the pry bar pulls the baseboard from the wall. Mallet just gets that pry bar in place. It's fairly simple and easy. And then we follow up by using this Bosch laser level. It'll be linked down below, but this makes finding measurements so quick and easy. You can go up to 65 feet, but there are some that go up to 165 feet. This one goes to 165. Then we come back with our stud finder to find all the studs that are located. Quick tip, mark right below your window trim. That way, when your window seat is in place and you need to screw it into the studs or screw the window seat into the studs, you know exactly where to screw inside of your carcass. And then I take my back plate and I mark where all the studs are located. That way I don't put any rail in that area. We're using spac screws, three and a half inch to go into the studs and then three inch screws to install the base together. Now, all we're doing here is just installing the base together. After we mark the studs, the locations on the two by four, we just put these rails together and then we're gonna transfer this base over to the wall and then screw it into the studs. Here you can see I'm using those spec screws to install the base to the studs. I'm installing about two per stud and just working my way down the wall. And then once I have that in place, I put the front on to the base. I keep them separated that way. If there's not enough room for me to install the base to the studs, at least I have that area. And then I just screw this in from the front using those three inch construction screws. As you can see, it is easy peasy 
lemon squeezy. Mm -hmm. I've seen some other guys that install cabinets use a towel in between their face frame and the parallel clamp. I've never done it before, but I think I'm going to start doing it. That way I don't damage the face frame. Once I have the position of where the face frame needs to be, I then screw in the Craig screws into the face frame. And these are all those Craig holes or those pocket holes that, that I drilled from earlier in the video. The X's that you see, there was a mistake that I made with that pocket hole jig. I didn't adjust the size. So some of those screw holes are at half inch instead of three quarter inch. So I just marked those X's so I knew exactly where not to drill. And now we're muscling it in place. This is where some of the troubles started to present themselves. Getting it inside was perfectly fine, but getting it into the nook, man, we, we thought we had to destroy this whole project. Quick tip for you guys, put some blue painter's tape on the front of your kick plate or toe kick where the rails are located on your base. That way, when you need to drill your window seat into the base, you know exactly where those rails are located if you put your toe kick on first. We put the toe kick on first so it was easy, and then we installed the window seat over top of that. So listen, we really thought we were gonna have to rebuild this because the window seat actually didn't fit. The face frame was too big, but then I realized I actually made the face frames ever so slightly bigger. So off camera, we were able to cut the face frames off ever so slightly. I think it was 1 16th we cut off. So 32nd and a 32nd to get it to fit. We really thought we were gonna have to rebuild this whole project. Once we had the window seat in the nook, then we just screwed everything in place. This is where that painter trick comes in handy because I know exactly where I need to screw everything. Now on to the seat cushion. So I found this on Amazon. I'll have a link below if you guys want to build your own. It's a fairly simple process, but we just open it up so that it can decompress while we finish working on the window seat. So we had to add these little spaces on the inside because the face frame was about a quarter inch. I added these quarter inch pieces of MDF to the walls. That way when the drawer slides were installed, it didn't interfere with the face frames. The boxes were already built based off of the size of the face frame, but I just had to install these pieces. I'm pretty sure there was, there's probably another way for me to do this, but I just found this to be easy and just quick on my behalf. Now we're just installing the drawer slides, using that little spacer down below to get everything evened out. Then we're just marking where the drawer slides on the side of the boxes need to be, prescribing a line, and then we follow up with marking where our holes need to be drilled to accept the drawer slides. I used a flat surface and just pressed the front edge of the drawer slide so it sat flush with the front of the drawer and then I screwed everything in place. And then once that was in place, I started to test things out and then I ran into another problem. For whatever reason, the box was a little too big. The other drawers, they slid open and closed with no problems. That one specifically gave me some issues. So I took the face frame or the front face and the back face off and I just cut those down a 16th of an inch and then it worked out perfectly. All right, you guys, so you know I got mad love for you. This product I'm using right here, don't buy it. It's complete trash, it's from Home Depot, it doesn't work. I use it on a project. The holes keep getting bigger and bigger so the spacing never lines up over time. Just use some like scrap piece of material, measure things out, and then pre-drill your holes on that. That way you can throw it away and then redo it if you ever need to. So you don't need that tool from Home Depot. And then here I'm using the card trick, just grabbing some playing cards to get the spacing right. I even it out for both sides and then I put the drawer front on to see where it sits. If I don't like where it sits, I just pull a couple cards out. And then once I have a good spacing, I brad nail around where the hardware is gonna go. Because as you can see from the other hardware, it hides around that hole. And that way it keeps the drawer front onto the drawer box. When I pull it out, it doesn't fall out of place. Those few brad nails, they're not gonna hurt the project. They're small, they won't come out the back, but it just holds things in place and makes it easier. I know you guys are digging my fork trick. Bon appetit. I got my trusty assistant, little Rayleigh, helping me out here. She's holding the uh, little screws in place for me. Caught her resting face, there you go. <laughs> 
Now that the foam is decompressed, we can work on the seat cushion. This is the base for the bottom of the window seat. I'm just marking around that base so I know exactly where to cut the foam. If any of you guys ever try to cut three inch or two inch foam, you notice how hard it is. But I got a perfect tip for you guys. It's a tool that I use. It's a specialty tool I had custom made. You're gonna love this one, trust me. Mark where the front is, and here's the tool. It is a turkey cutter, you heard that right. This turkey cutter cuts foam like butter. I kid you not, this is the only thing that I found to work on cutting foam. I've tried razor blades, sharp scissors, the table saw, nothing works as good as this turkey cutter, <laughs> right? I wanted to say table saw, but it's literally a turkey cutter. Now, once the seat cushion was cut, then it was time to install everything. We use felt to line the inside of the cushion to the base and we staple it together. The felt just keeps the wood from cutting through the final fabric. We just line everything up and I'm using a stapler to just staple everything in place. Rayleigh's standing on top of it to compress the cushion ever so slightly. That way when we put it on top, it's rounded over on the sides. Then once that felt is in place, oh, we call it Koa's resting face. Sam and Rayleigh's helping me compress it even more so that we can install the final fabric over top. And we just cut all the additional material. We don't leave it, we cut it so it's not underneath the window seat and bulging up. And then we just screw it from underneath. And for the final result, let me know what you guys think. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video if you found it helpful. I definitely wanna get it out to a larger audience so I can help out more people. But I appreciate you guys tuning in. Until next time, peace.